Killer Ape Theory. Created by Raymond Dart in the 1950s, Killer Ape Theory states that, quote, war and interpersonal aggression are the driving force behind human evolution. And with this, one is left wondering, is the history of my species entirely propagated on a detestable trait such as innate aggression and its even more deplorable cousin? Fear? Killer Ape Theory would have you believe that if it had not been for the aggression of your ancestors, not only would you not exist, but humankind as a whole would have never developed. Worse yet, if you're a male, the theory implies that you would be inherently more aggressive than a female of your species. What does this say about human men, and what does this say about human society. In this video, we're going to be analyzing this very theory and forming some opinions of our own about the killer ape theory. How plausible is it and what does it say about our past? So let's analyze the killer ape theory. So the killer ape theory states that once again, all of humanity, right? Everything that led up to what we are as humans, as homo sapiens, but also everything that came right before us as well. So any ape, right? Maybe any ancestors of what would have become Homo sapiens, Australopithecus as a genus, Homo as a genus, the great apes in general, that we all share genetic traits that fundamentally control the way that we behave and that we as humans are not immune to that. I like this because it implies a few things. Number one, humans in and of themselves are inherently an aggressive species. Two, humans, like any other animal, are not entirely in control of all of their genetic predispositions, which in particular I find fascinating. And three, men specifically are born with innate aggression. So let's go ahead and take a look at those three ideas. First of all, what I can say is that everything in human history has been genuinely categorized by aggression that is a direct result of literally every single technological advancement that has ever been accomplished in the history of mankind, and quite frankly, all of the intellectual ones as well. I mean, aggression fundamentally did shape human history, both the aggression itself, but also the way that we reacted to it. And at any point in history where individuals attempted to create a society that was either absent of interpersonal aggression to any varying degree, or inherently pacifist, they were always, every time, dominated by an outside force who did not share their beliefs. So that's putting a lot of the cards on the table right off the bat, right? That would almost in and of itself, in my opinion, just having a fundamental understanding of human history as a whole would prove the killer ape theory in my mind. But of course, we can go past humans. We learned that chimpanzees, one of the most closely related animals to humans on this planet, that they are as aggressive as we are, and that would imply that aggression is innate to what it means to be an ape. And aggression is a very interesting word here. You know, people's first ideas of aggression is that everybody's running around all over the place, raping, killing, and fighting with absolutely no rhyme or reason for it. But really what we're trying to say is being more aggressive tends to make you more successful as an ape. And what this ultimately resulted in is a mostly patriarchal society that we do actually see across all apes, and I do mean all of them, with the only exception being mostly contested, by the way, but it being among the Bonobos. But I digress. What we still see, even in Bonobo society, is the aggression was toned down. In other words, what I would like to see is a study in which the Bonobos don't have what they want, a society in which not all of the men are able to find happiness or perhaps even the women, and then I would like to see what happens then. Are they really so pacifist, or do they listen to their instincts? And does the interpersonal aggression begin there? So yes, I do think humans are inherently an aggressive species, and history, I think, is a nice little ode to that very fact. Also, the idea that we are not the only apes that do this shows that it isn't just a human trait, but that it's even deeper than that. It's a trait of great apes in general. So I find this very interesting just as a historian because when you look at killer ape theory, it right away makes a lot of sense. The first thing I think when I read it is that when it says a theory that war and interpersonal aggression were the driving forces behind human evolution, I think to myself, well, humans are naturally aggressive and it's very clear that that permeates within human society. Plus, it's important to keep in mind that as soon as humans got rid of non-human competition, there was only one place to look, and that was at ourselves. 
In Western culture, you can look at corporations and business culture. You can also look at ancient societies, feudalism, as well as the general concept of government, which only exists as a direct result of military conquest. I mean, this is not a made-up thing. It's just fact. So if it's been the case that these have been the driving forces for human history, wouldn't it make sense that they are also the reasons that humans evolved in general and that apes evolve in general as a direct extension of that? And I do think that within male culture, it becomes very clear that throughout the eons, it has been the more aggressive males that have succeeded over the less aggressive males. And this is not something that is necessarily forced on men, but more a product of their life. When you take a naturally aggressive species and you make them consistently compete with each other, what's going to happen is that slowly over time, the men that are able to be the most aggressive, the ones that are able to come out on top, are going to be the ones that continuously pass down their genes. And then ultimately that will shape a gene pool. And so when you don't have that same selective pressure on women, you get half of the species being far more aggressive on average than the other half. But then does that make it genetic? genetic or does that make it cultural but then when you see it in other animals that aren't supposed to have anything sophisticated enough to really be called a culture we call it genetic but again if you were to give let's say chimpanzees everything they could ever want would you ever really see them fight as much Probably not. And I think that's probably what this means, is that throughout human history, whenever humans did actually experience times of peace, as a direct result of a culture being rich in a variety of different ways, they were able to put aside their aggressive instincts because they weren't really required. And look at ancient Greece. It allowed them to sit there and think, literally about the world. But ancient Greece was incredibly warlike. They were a collection of city-states that consistently fought against each other, and this interpersonal conflict did genuinely shape Greek society. Look at Sparta as the most obvious example, but not even required any of the city-states would really do. So I guess it's important to keep in mind that when you look at genetics, we do know that you can actually pass down certain behaviors. But again, we know that there are certain behavioral traits that are genetic. So what this would imply is that culture to some varying degree can end up genetic because if your culture stresses certain traits eventually individuals that are just more predispositioned towards exhibiting those traits are going to be born because those who do not have those traits will be shunned and have less chance to reproduce i find that very interesting but i almost feel like that by itself requires a whole nother video but Again, this is controllable, and I do think that's very important to keep in mind. I think something that scares people is that we're going to all just suddenly agree that all of our predispositional instincts are inherently an excuse for all of our bad behavior, and that they are, again, inherently, once again, uncontrollable. But that's not the case at all. I think it's very important to take a second to keep in mind that what makes us special is that we can control it in a way that other animals may not necessarily have as easy a time of doing. And that's because of our ability to use logic and reason, but it doesn't necessarily shape everything about what makes us who we are in the modern world because we are living in such a fundamentally different way than we've ever lived before. So I would disagree that humans, like any other animal, are not entirely in control of their genetic predispositions. I think we are in complete control of how we act. I think that's what makes us different. I do think that the pull in a certain direction could be stronger for certain individuals, but I believe that all of this comes from a variety of different factors that we can't necessarily control due to the sporadic nature that is life itself. In other words, some people are going to be luckier than others in life, right? Some people are just going to be born into a better situation that fundamentally changes how they think and what they do. But everybody has the equal amount of potential if they have any self-control to change all of these things that make us who we are and become better people. That's what I think. So with all of that being said, to me, the killer ape theory seems to be an incredibly logical idea. And once again, the Gombe chimpanzee war is a very good case study as well because it shows that this innate aggression territorialness and what have you is not a fundamentally human trait it's an ape trait and we're apes
Now, there have been some critics of this theory, but from what I can see, it's not very many. It seems to be a generally well-recepted idea because I think it's obvious that the evidence is there, but some people think if you look deeper into it, it might be the case that we are not naturally warlike or aggressive. One such person, Douglas P. Fry, in his book War, Peace, and Human Nature, specifically says that he rejects any genetic basis to violence or even warfare in general. And he says that the whole idea that we're warlike or aggressive is a direct result of misinterpretations of things like fossil evidence or a lack of research into other apes. But I think since then, although that book was written in 2013, what we do know as a direct result of the Gombe Chimpanzee War, what we do know as a direct result of studies on Neanderthals, how they looked at territory, our best guesses on what their society would have been like, human history as a whole, I think it becomes very clear that apes in general are very aggressive and that humans are apes and therefore we are very aggressive by nature. And I think sexual dimorphism is a cute little biological trait that inherently implies some form of male aggression as well. I mean, if you look at other animals, like let's say lions, right? Male lions are the ones that fight other male lions and protect the pride. But it's just different and yet oddly similar to how other mammals tend to work. So what do you guys think? Is this theory logical to you? Killer ape theory, once again, Again, the theory that war and interpersonal aggression are the driving forces behind human evolution. I think it makes perfect sense. Again, there are some people who would say that it is not necessarily true that challenge this idea. But anyway, leave a comment in the comment section below telling me what you think about the killer ape theory. But I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.